Something that I've wondered is, why is Kamen Rider more popular than Ultraman? Well, that's what I at least keep hearing. There is some merit to that, as there are a ton more members on the Rider subreddit than the Ultraman subreddit. Plus, we have popular online figures like Iron Mouse, who are big fans of Rider. Don't play that clip! Do you want Toei to Rider kick this channel to oblivion? Play a different clip! <gasps> is that the belt? For Revice? But what I find interesting is that Kamen Rider seems more popular than Ultraman here in the States, despite Toei only recently starting to do a real push to distribute Rider here, even though it's a slow and inconsistent push. Now, I'm not the only one who's been wondering this, as there was discussion on Twitter due to someone asking this exact question in a now-deleted tweet. Granted, it did unintentionally cause quite a bit of toxicity, which is sadly par for the course on Twitter. However, there were some interesting answers to this tweet, and others that I've heard throughout the years. Some say it has to do with the gadgets and designs, or how it had to do with the timing. And of course, there's the mastodon in the room, the Power Rangers. Go, go Power, Rangers! Power Rangers Season 3 did introduce the Mask Rider, and the character spawned into his own show with... mixed results. And also, there was Kamen Rider Dragon Knight, which I genuinely hear good things about, but I also hear that it was doomed to being on a bad time slot, which is probably the reason I missed out on this show when growing up. While I do believe these are all factors to Kamen Rider's popularity, I don't think they're the core reason Kamen Rider continues to appeal more than Ultraman to the Western audience. I have a theory as to what the core reason is, and that's what this video is all about. A few quick disclaimers. First, this is not a video discussing which series is better. Personally, I'm more of an Ultraman fan as it's evident in my previous videos. And no, that's not me saying Ultraman is better than Kamen Rider. Second, I'm not an expert on Kamen Rider or the fanbase. While I actually do like Kamen Rider, at the time of writing this, I still have yet to finish a single Rider series. Wait! Don't go! I'm almost done with the first series and pre-ordered Kuga on Blu-ray. I swear, I'm a real fan! Finally, this is just a fun opinion-based video essay meant to entertain so don't take this video too seriously. With that out of the way, on to the video. Before we talk about Ryder's popularity, we must discuss why Ultraman hasn't been as popular. First, a history lesson. Hey, this stuff is important. Anyways, a thing to note is that Ultraman actually did make his way to the States long before Ryder or even Power Rangers did. The original Ultraman was dubbed by the same folks who did Speed Racer. Look at those clouds up there. They're beautiful. And it's a perfect day for a drive. Aw, oh, Trixie, please stop talking. I'm trying to figure something out. Oh! And according to the dubbing wiki, the English dub was in syndication all the way up to the early 90s. TNT in 1985 dubbed Ultra 7. Plus, there were a few co-productions in the 80s and early 90s whose goals were to grab a US audience. Some attempts were good in quality, others, not so much. Funny enough, that last show never aired in the States, even though it was produced here. While most of their attempts didn't stick, the original Ultraman did have some popularity, as the generation that grew up with the show would go on to make media that reference Ultraman. Ben 10 is probably the biggest example of this with the character way big. However, in the mid-90s, a great evil bestowed on Tsuburaya Productions. We would be here all day if we dug into the Chayo fiasco, so I'll have a video from Goji04 in the description if you want to learn more. But we did get one more show that aired on US TV in the early 2000s. 
got cancelled halfway through. It probably didn't help it was done by four kids. However, Ultraman shows have been available for streaming since 2015 with shows jumping from one service to another. If you want to learn more about the US home video releases, I'll have a video from Vintage Henshin in the description. So, Tsubaya throughout the years has made several efforts to branch Ultraman out to the states, but really only one has had any significant staying power, with the audience. Why is that? Well, Giant Kaiju Media isn't really that popular. Put down your pitchforks! Now granted, we have seen a surge in Kaiju Media in the past decade, with even the word Kaiju being frequently used in Western media. But still, looking at the box office, none of the recent Godzilla movies reached the same amount of money the top 20 Marvel movies have made domestically. As much as the kaiju genre has grown in popularity, it's still by and large considered a niche in the states. For one reason or another, kaiju media is just not appealing to the American audience. At least as much as we want it to be. This is a struggle when it comes to Ultraman when a majority of enemies are kaiju. Another thing to note is that Ultraman is not set up like a typical superhero series and instead heavily leans into science fiction. Most of the time, Ultraman himself doesn't appear until the end of the episode. That could be a turnoff for those who are expecting something more akin to, say, a Marvel or a DC property. And finally, Ultraman has garnered a reputation of being a little weird. Which, yeah, it can be sometimes. Needless to say, Ultraman has somewhat developed a barrier of entry for most. However, there's one comparison that has been made that can help explain the difference in popularity. If you've been around the toku circles for a while, you've probably heard some people say, Ultraman is the Superman of Japan, and Kamen Rider is the Batman of Japan. And let's be honest, that is sort of the case. Ultraman is a symbol of hope, while Kamen Rider is considered to be the symbol of justice. I've even heard people say the original Ultraman series is a mix of Superman and Star Trek. But I do think this comparison is important to us for understanding why Kamen Rider seems to be more popular in America. Now, Superman is a popular and iconic superhero, but most of the time he is constantly trailing behind Batman and Spider-Man, but that's not important. Why is that? I mean, why is Batman more popular, not the Spider-Man part? You, you, you know what I mean. The point is, there is something that really makes Batman appealing to the general American audience. Of course, like the topic we're discussing in this video, there has been many different answers. He's cool, he has awesome gadgets, and he's prepared for anything. However, there's a bigger and more relevant reason people are attracted to the Dark Knight. Not that way. See, Superman is an alien who can do things beyond human capabilities, just like Ultraman. Meanwhile, there's two things that Batman really has going for him. He's dark, and he's human. As I've stated before, I don't have as much experience with Ryder than I do with Ultraman. However, one major difference I've noticed between the two is the nature of their powers. Or rather, the circumstances in which turns them into heroes. One of the common origins for the hero in an Ultraman show is that the human protagonist sacrifices themselves, protecting the lives of others, but are then given a second chance at life by fusing with the Ultra. Becoming Ultraman is seen as sort of a divine intervention a reward for their courage and their sacrifice. But in Kamen Rider, it is anything but. In the first series, the antagonist organization, Shocker, kidnaps the protagonist, Takeshi Hongo, and turns him into a cyborg so he could serve their evil goals for world domination. Hongo manages to escape before they could reprogram his mind, 
but he is left feeling like he is no longer human. He uses his newly found curse to fight the ones who cursed him, to fight for justice. Despite the transformation, the heroes still remain human, even if they don't believe it. Justice and what it means to be human are common themes I've noticed in the Rider series. While the Riders fight against the forces of evil, they can still feel positive emotions like joy and compassion. However, they also feel negative emotions like fear and anger. Now, I'm not a psychiatrist. Shocking, I know. But I don't think you need a PhD to know that we tend to focus on the negatives. That's why news sites post more negative news as bad news usually gets more clicks than good news. See, our caveman brains have developed a negativity bias because back in the day, that's what helped kept our species alive. That's why the emotions fear and anger are some of the most powerful emotions you can feel. We are attracted to these negative emotions, and it's also why I think Kamen Rider is more appealing to people. One thing I haven't mentioned is that the Kamen Rider series delves into horror as a genre. Of course, the series is still aimed towards a younger audience, so don't expect anything gruesome. Okay, never mind. Anyways, Kamen Rider having horror elements is yet another similarity to Batman. This is important to note because horror is directly rooted in fear, in which we already established is a powerful emotion. That's why horror is a very popular genre for all ages. Fear isn't the only powerful emotion present in Kamen Rider. Remember when I said that Kamen Rider deals with justice as a common theme? Well, to fight for justice, you must be fighting injustice. The concept of injustice is rooted in anger. In the definition of injustice, you'll find the word unfairness. Why we need to know this is because of this thing called inequity aversion. Another thing our caveman brains have developed. The topic of inequity aversion is a whole can of worms in itself, but the only thing we need to know about it for this video is that it's the reason why we can be mad or irritated when we see something being unfair. In Kamen Rider, we see the villains commit injustices left and right, which can make us feel anger towards these criminals. This will also leave us craving for Kamen Rider to enact justice against the forces of evil. With those two powerful emotions being so closely linked to the cores of both the hero and the series, you have something that is inherently more appealing to the average person. In conclusion, the core themes of Kamen Rider and the powerful negative emotions it's associated with are why I believe that the series has been more popular than Ultraman, at least here in the States. You could have just said that on Twitter. Did you not hear what I said about Twitter earlier? Of course, that could always change. What's considered more or less popular is always changing. Even though I said Batman is more popular than Superman, there have been times where the opposite has been true. And something else to note is that Subaraya in recent years has been much more aggressive in getting Ultraman to the States than Toei has with Kamen Rider. While yes, Fudo P.I. is airing on Crunchyroll, we still don't have legal access to the vast majority of Kamen Rider series, even the one that the anime is a sequel to. Meanwhile, not only are most of the Ultraman series widely and affordably available to the American fans, there's been new content made for the Western audience with the Marvel comics or the currently in development Netflix animated movie. By the way, it looks absolutely gorgeous. But only time will tell. There's so many factors and nuances that go into what becomes popular. Also, what becomes popular in one region doesn't mean it's popular in another. At the end of the day though, it doesn't matter which one is more popular than the other. Both Ultraman and Kamen Rider are fantastic franchises in their own rights. All that matters is that you enjoy what appeals to you, as long as you don't hurt someone else in the process. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching this video. I 
spent a lot of time working on the script and I'm going to be going into editing pretty soon. I bought myself a new headset, still working out the kinks. Uh, hopefully this goes through okay. So we'll see from there. Uh, other than that, just as a heads up, because I record videos way ahead of time, there are going to be some videos that are using the old headset, so the audio quality is going to be inconsistent for the next couple of weeks. But besides that, thank you so much for watching. I would really love it if you subscribe. I got more videos planned coming up, and I can't wait to be talking about more Ultraman and Kamen Rider stuff and a bunch of other topics. Also, please go follow me on Twitter. I post a lot of my artwork on there, and I would love for you guys to see the art that I produce, even the you know little sketches I post here and there. Tell me in the comments what I'm doing right or what I'm doing wrong. Press the like button if you like Comet Rider and Ultraman or just like one or the other. Press the dislike button if you like neither Ultraman or Kamen Rider, in which case, why did you click on the video? But finally, I hope you have an amazing day. Take care and shoo watch!